and welcome back to the Industry Experts series on PCB data management. My name is John Watson. In the first part of this series, we actually looked at the SMART rule regarding PCB and having a successful PCB data management system, where we saw that the first rule is singularity. The second part we looked at are managed in our architecture that we would have. And this last part, we we're actually going to then be looking at the last two pillars that we're going to have to be putting up to support our PCB data. We are working in an industry that is always changing. And I can tell you that the pressures as a PCB designer are ever increasing. If you ask the sales department their biggest concern on a product, what is it? When can we have this? When can we get this? We'd like to put it up on the shelf. We'd like to start selling it. The, that has forced the PCB designer into reducing the time from concept to market. And they're pressured every single day on this. That means for us as PCB designers that it's not going to be business as usual. That we have to get this right the first time. And if we miss errors in our designs, it will absolutely destroy that planned schedule you have. That, that all the scheduled releases for your products will actually go out the window pretty quickly. And heaven forbid, if you actually have problems that get out to your customers, now you have the, now you have the issues of what? A lost reputation and issues regarding that. It's so very common that when problems do get outside of a factory or a company and they do get to a customer, that it does affect in this sort of industry that we work in. So it's very, these pillars are actually going to become very, very important for you as you begin to develop this. The fourth pillar that we're going to be looking at is your reviewability. You're re reviewable. I, I was recently sitting down with uh, a PCB designer and he was the engineering manager and I asked him, so, so how do you see your PCB data? How is it? He goes, well, I believe it's pretty good. I said, but do you know? He goes, what, well, what do you mean? I said, well, you know, if I told you, hey, you know what, go on over to a stove, put your hand over a hot burner, it's going to burn your hand. Well, at that point, you believe that. Now, if you actually go over and put your hand over a hot stove, what, what happened? You want from believing to knowing. We cannot be satisfied in the PCB industry that we are, are working in to just believe that the data that we have is good. We have to know, and we have to know for sure. And the way that we, we make sure that it is correct is by reviewing it and making verifying that it is to a certain standard. I'll tell you a little story. There is a lighthouse off the coast of Northern, California, uh, Northern Carolina. Actually, there's three lighthouses. And this is a rather rugged area. And what happens is when the ship captain comes in, what he does is, and what you might not think is that he goes from lighthouse to lighthouse to lighthouse. What he does instead is he lines up all three lighthouses to where he sees a single light. That is in general what we do as PCB designers. We line up a standard and everything then falls into place. We should see single light, a single truth that we follow. So what would be the standards that we then follow? What would be the standard of the guidelines that we follow? Well, number one is this, our data sheets. The backbone of every single design starts with a data sheet. Uh, but be careful with those data sheets. They have been known to be wrong. And I have seen basically multiple problems develop because a data sheet was followed and it was incorrect in some way. So a real good solution to solve that issue is to have multiple sources for components. It's not a very good practice at, at all to have a single source for a component anyway. If it turns out that that vendor or that supplier for that component goes out of business, then you're now in the process of having to find a replacement. So it's always a good practice when you bring in new, new components into your, 
into your process that you actually have multiple sources. Along with those sources, then you pull their data sheets and you do a comparison to make sure that one of them's not out of place. The other standard that you can could definitely follow is the IPC standards. I would highly recommend you to go to IPC.com and look at the, the uh, families of, of products and standards that are available to us as designers to help us. Those are basically guidelines. I would highly recommend for you to look at, for example, to start off with is IPC 2221, 2222. Uh, IPC 7351 and 7251. These are standards that are, 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 are guidelines as designers. And those are sort of the benchmarks that we should follow. Now, one of the concerns is that, that there will be always component changes that are involved. For example, recently with IPC, they made a change from 7351B when, when the, over to C by the rounding off of a pad, for example, in the footprint. So how would you implement then component changes? Well, if you have a release component in your design that has been used and it's been verified, well, you have to say, well, a change has now been done. Something drives that change first off. And what happens is you implement that change, that, that component is, is reverted back to a new state the life cycle changes on that component. Then the component can be used in, in a new design for a fabrication, but the rule that you should have is this, is that board cannot be fabricated until that component has been verified. Review the data sheet, take the standards, take your data sheet, your stand, IPC standards, and look at that component and check off on it, make sure that it is correct. Don't assume anything because it will be those assumptions that will come back to you and will be some major issues down the road. During this whole review process, it will protect the design from unverified changes. Always know where your design is at. Always know where your components are at in your design. If changes have been done, that, that component then reverts back to new and it's, it doesn't move forward until it's been verified. The fifth and final pillar in our PCB data management system is tailored. Now, a lot of times that we, we stop at reviewing our data, we think, okay, it's good, we're, we're fine. And that's usually where a lot of companies stop. There is a fifth pillar. The fifth pillar is actually one of the more important ones, and that is tailored. We need to, we need to have an attitude change in our, uh, how we look at this process. Some believe that once that design is done, it's out, it's, it's finished, we're, we're, we made it through. You know, a lot of times everyone takes a deep breath and go, oh, we made it, all right? Well, we, when you have, a, let me give you an analogy. When you have a, a metal, when you take that metal through a fire, you burn off the, the dross and you're, you're, you, what you're doing is you're refining the metal. If you take silver and you constantly put it through the fire, you're burning off the, the impurities or the dross and each cycle it goes through, it gets better and better. That is in the same way how we should be looking at our data. We should always be looking at refining it, always improving it. And that can be just this whole process of tailoring can be looked at as like a post-production review process. Uh, and there are some major reports that you can be looking at, some major areas that you can be looking of, of reports that you can get back from your process. Don't just be satisfied with re releasing that fabrication data and saying, okay, we're done. Expect some information, have a communication back. Some of the reports that you should be looking at is this. Number one is PCB fabrication report. What did your fabrication house find? Then another one is to actually have a design for manufacturing report done and to see what is, a, there are actually houses and, and facilities that will, will conduct just a design for manufacturing report. Then we always look at trying to get a report back from our assembly house and seeing what issues they had. 
And then we also then look at field service failures. A lot of times, if the failure or a problem did go out, sometimes those field service failures may be a result of a bad uh, component or a bad, uh, bad design in some way. And lastly, IPC standards for any changes in the, in the industry. These are all reports that we can analyze. And what we have to do is we have to determine the root cause of those failures. And we have to determine if it relates back to our PCB data in some way. We have to understand that, the, that even though that data got out, it may not be perfect yet. So have these reports back. Through, so what we've done is we've actually looked at the five pillars of a successful PCB data management system. And what are those? They're singular. You're going to have a managed they're going to be, have a good architecture. You're going to have it reviewed. And then you're going to have it tailored. So this whole path of success is not a straight line for us. What it is, it is actually a circle. It feeds back onto itself like a ring. But it has no start, no ending, no beginning. And that is our PCB management system. That we can actually develop an ever improving system and we can work with. I hope this has been helpful for you. Some of the key, key takeaways I want you to, to remember was that with the increased demands in our industry, we must work smarter. We have to work better. And by looking at our fourth pillar of reviewing and our fifth pill, pillar of tailoring your data and constantly refining it, we're, gonna have a, we're not gonna have a straight line to success, but rather a circle that we're gonna constantly be able to improve on. I hope you've enjoyed this episode. And I, if you have, then please leave a comment below. Your questions, your comments, and, and share this with your colleagues. In our next episode, we are actually gonna be looking at what are some of the common issues with the PCB design workflows that we need to be aware of to make sure that we don't fall and, and hit problems. Thank you for listening. My name is John Watson.